How's it going everyone and welcome back to the Enclave. So today we are going to be starting with our handle and use of a self-loading rifle or carbine. <clears throat> As always we are going to be skipping over section 1 um, which is the law if you would like to see that as always I will put a link to it at the end of the video um, but that will be the handgun module 1 law they are all the same so as always we are going to start with module 2 safety <clears throat> so beginning as always with everything we do we always have to identify safe directions and keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction. Now, what is a safe direction? A safe direction is a direction in which you point the firearm, there will be no damage or loss of life. Um, well, I should say damage or loss to life. Um, so, damage to walls and whatnot, you know, that is sort of why we aim at the walls but you want to make sure that if a shot were to go off no one would be injured or killed that is the primary reason of identifying and keeping our firearms pointed in safe directions so what is a safe direction 45 degrees on average <laughs> you want to keep the firearm pointed at a point where the floor and wall meet if you're only in a place where there is a floor, you obviously want to keep the firearm pointed at the floor, but you must understand ricochets can occur, um, especially with the higher powered rounds like the 5.56 or 223s, um, 308s, things like that, uh, they can ricochet quite easily. So that is pretty much that. We then move on to the firearm safety rules. These are the four fundamental safety rules. Always keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction. So that is a given. Never point the firearm at anything you are not willing to destroy is another way of putting that. Always keep your finger off the trigger until ready to fire. And this is something that is crucially important and the reason I say that is that a lot of negligent discharges I don't believe in calling them accidental discharges because um, accidental discharges are extremely rare negligent discharges are a lot more common so <clears throat> a lot of the negligent discharges that I have seen be it on YouTube or whatever have occurred because the person has not kept their finger off the trigger until they were ready to fire. So what often happens is people will draw the firearm and already they will have their finger on the trigger. Now as that weapon's coming up, if you were to pull that trigger, who's to say where that bullet is going to go? Until your firearm is up, stable and on target, you want to keep your finger off and away from the trigger. Only once you're ready to fire on the trigger and you can then take your shot. Once you're finished firing and you've assessed the situation, you want your finger off the trigger again. That is the most important firearm rule in my personal opinion. Always treat a firearm as if it were loaded. Once again, this includes anything, be it a toy, be it a real firearm, be it whatever. You always want to treat firearms as if they are loaded. Even if you know they are not, as is the case with this. So, you still want to treat it as if it is loaded. Finally, know your target and what is beyond it. Now, in the sense of law, in the sense of good and justness in the world, this should be the most important rule when it comes to actually using your firearm in a self-defense scenario because often time you can see it um, where people will be so focused on the threat that's right in front of them 
they don't realize that their bullets are traveling into a car that's sitting across the road or whatever the case may be. So you absolutely want to know your target and what is beyond it. Obviously, there are times where you've got to do what you've got to do. Um, but understand that you will be responsible for the, the, co the, the consequences and the aftermath of that. So, those are our firearm rules covered. So we move on to safety inspections. When to carry out safety inspections? As always, this will be in your test. Well, most likely will be in your test. So, when to carry out a safety inspection? Before handing a firearm over to someone, after receiving a firearm from someone, and before you clean the firearm. Those are the three situations in which you will perform safety inspections on a firearm. Does not matter what type of firearm, you always want to make sure that if someone's handed you a firearm, it is clear. Especially if you're wanting to be testing triggers and things like that. Once again, there are some pretty horrific videos out there of quite trained people shooting their hands apart because someone handed them a loaded firearm and the first thing they did was sort of hold the weapon like this and pull the trigger. And I mean, my safety's on, so my trigger's not even moving. But that's your hand gone. Like, like not necessarily... <laughs> but depending on where it hits, you've lost your hand. So, once again, be muzzle conscious. So that person, it was actually a police officer in the US, he basically was handed a revolver. Now, of course, I don't have a freaking handgun around me um, that I'm willing to show you this with. Um, but basically, he was handed a, a handgun he then was holding like the barrel of the handgun and like looking at it like this and he then pulled the trigger and it blew his index finger off he now has no left index finger the other problem was where that muzzle was pointed there were two people standing further down in the shop so he was not muzzle conscious he pointed the muzzle at something he wasn't willing to destroy i.e. his hand and or the other people he also did not keep his finger off the trigger so he made numerous mistakes, and that is the thing. It is often stated in these books, safety rules themselves will not prevent accidents. But if you obey all of the safety rules, accidents are far, far, far less likely to occur. So that is just something that I want to say. I know we went off on a tangent there, but <clears throat> it is what it is. So, how to perform a safety inspection. So, I'm going to try and make sure this is all on camera. So, as always, you want to identify a safe direction. Keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction with your finger off of the trigger. We want to drop the source of feed, i.e. the magazine. Then going to pull the charging handle to the rear and inspect into the chamber and into the magazine well. Once that is complete, the firearm is safe. Um, on the LM style um, rifles, what you're going to have to do, so let's start this again, on LM style rifles, what you're going to have to do is drop your magazine, okay, so you're going to have to identify a safe direction, point the firearm in a safe direction with the finger off the trigger, drop the magazine, you're then going to need to switch the firearm onto the fire setting before you will be able to pull the charging handle back and inspect into the magazine wall and <sighs> chamber. You then can release that forward and return the firearm to the safe mode or put the safety on. You know what I mean. At that point the firearm is safe. That is our safety inspection complete. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So, here we go. Let me just show you an image of this. I do actually do all of my rifle tests with an LM style rifle. So I am quite familiar with their safety system. But you will see there 
how the LM safety works. It is a simple slide up or down mechanism. They can be quite firm. Um, often I will actually remove my finger from the trigger and force my thumb up or force it down and then return my hand to the grip and continue to shoot because um, they can be quite stiff depending on the rifle. But that is pretty much that. Ooh, I've lost some light there. Um, and then finally be muzzle conscious. Um, as I said I gave you a little bit of an anecdote for that already but there are plenty of situations where people don't consider what they're doing. Someone hands you, like I say, a handgun or whatever, and the first thing you do is you hold it by the front of the slide. And, well, you can see there's, there's not really much wiggle room here to make a mistake. Something like a Glock, you're not going to have a manual safety. And that could be your handgun, it could be your family member dead. Like, it, it's a very important thing to be muzzle conscious and to obey on top of that all of the other firearm rules because they really are there for a reason finally we are going to get to ear protection and like I actually realized that I could be showing you guys this so give me one second here we go you're gonna want something like this now, I will admit, even by my standards, these are very expensive. These are mid-level um, electronic noise cancelling, shooting, sports <laughs> maps, whatever you want to call them. Um, we are going to be doing a review on these at some point. But, yeah, so... You are going to want a set of these or something that completely covers the ear for indoor shooting. Now you see the fancy thing about this is that I could turn on the amplifier and then I can hear myself perfectly and I don't have to adjust the volume of my voice to talk to you guys. So these will basically protect your ears indoor, outdoor, wherever, from whatever as long as yeah you've got these on or something along the lines of this that covers your entire ear it will protect the inner ear bones from vibrations so that is something you definitely want to know for your test and yeah that is pretty much it like crucially safety equipment is going to be ear protection and eye protection so, a lot of people will still wear earplugs with these um, if they are not electronic. So, what then happens is when people choose to then move these off their ear, they will still have a form of sort of light ear protection, but they'll be able to hear people. Fortunately, with something like this that is electronic, they have microphones built in. There's a microphone there and there's a microphone on the other side. So this is going to amplify people's voices. You're not actually going to have an issue hearing your instructors or hearing people you're trying to talk to. But non-electronic ones, which are a damn side cheaper, are going to pretty much just completely block out your hearing. So it might become difficult for you to hear instructors or other people you're at the range with or whatever. So, yeah, that is just something to bear in mind um, yeah so I was just wanting to make sure these are actually off and they are fabulous um, so yeah that is pretty much it you're gonna want to make sure your eyes are protected and your ears are protected and that is pretty much that what you're gonna need to know for your test is that indoor ranges you want to use earmuffs or earphones because they protect your inner ear bones from vibrations. So that is a crucial takeaway from the PPE section of the book. And that is that, everyone. We are complete with our first section, which is Module 2, Safety. As always, if you learned anything, liked anything, or feel like I left anything out, 
please comment it down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And if you've got more time, check out another video at the end here. As always, peace out.